I returned to Thailand one year later to revisit the island of Koh Tao. First, by flying into the city of Suratani. Suratani is a small, easygoing city near the Gulf of Thailand with a couple local markets and mostly local vibes. A good transiting hotel to stay at is Blue Monkey, which was a really clean and modern hotel, except that the bathroom door is a giant curtain for some reason. But hey, on the flip side, they offer complimentary juice, coffee, and never-ending bananas. The hotel is also right nearby one, if not my only favorite restaurant in all of Suratani. It's 100% vegetarian, offering a variety of incredibly delicious and flavorful Thai food for an affordable price. After several days, it was time to head to Koh Tao. We booked our tickets with Lampraya. They're the ones that basically run the show here, and after a bus service transfer, which took about an hour, we boarded a speedboat from Donsak Pier to head to the island. The service is top-notch, and they are usually quick and on time to get you to your destination. We docked at May Hod Pier and then walked to our nearby hotel. Our accommodation was at Infinity Guest House, right off the main road, which offered a comfortable room, on-site restaurant, and one of the best massage parlors on the island. Koh Tao, once again, shows off its brilliant sunsets, coupled with a mellow beach lifestyle. The whole island is much more alive right now than it was 12 months prior. Virtually every shop and storefront is busy with the influx of tourism, and Sairi Beach has seen probably the most development. There are new restaurants, cafes, clubs, dispensaries, everywhere you look, and it's pretty eye-opening to see how far it's come since the last time I visited. We checked out our go-to restaurant once again that's right on the beach side. After being amazed by their food last year, it was unfortunately pretty underwhelming. So instead, we walked further down the road and found Teak Restaurant. Here, the food is appetizing, and I strongly recommend you give this wildly underrated eatery a try. Koh Tao has also embraced the holistic culture with more yoga studios focused on boosting mental and well-being. They encourage guests to also seek the art of free diving as a way of clearing the mind, enhancing blood oxygen, and overall increase endurance and vitality. Give it a try. A good little getaway to take from the main strip is Tanote Bay. This is a nice cove tucked away on the south part of the island with granite boulders rising out of the water, perfect to jump off of and snorkel the area. There are a couple of restaurants on the beach as well, and it's a fantastic area for a quick day trip on the island. Our goal for revisiting Koh Tao was to get our advanced diving certification, which is spaced over the course of two days. We went back to our guys at Roctopus and got outfitted for our upcoming dives. All the dive boats are packed in together this time around, which requires some super careful maneuvering between boats. It's pretty cumbersome and annoying, but a skill you must master before heading out on the water. We had some pretty exciting deep dives at the beginning, along with a challenging wreck dive to practice trim and perfect buoyancy. There was a night dive included as well. But instead of seeing some active marine life, it was more of a game of hide and seek in the dark with the sharp sea urchins. 
We successfully completed our advanced certification, but in my honest opinion, it was kind of a stressful scenario. With the increase of dive boats, new divers, lavish tours, and fishing vessels, the underwater world becomes crowded and slightly chaotic. It's something I expected, and I don't want to discourage anyone from going, but it's definitely something to consider if you're planning on diving Kotal. Before leaving the island, we caught a beautiful sunset on one of Kotal's highest peaks at a place called Secret Bar. It's a cool establishment run by a local family that offers sweeping views of the western coast of the island. Also nearby is High the Moon Cafe, a second restaurant with a spectacular view, relaxed vibes, and yeah, you guessed it, expensive cocktails. It's also the location of a secondary yoga studio that welcomes the sunrise as well as a flow for the sunset. The interior is very modern, nicely decorated, and has plenty of seating for taking in the sights as well as the sounds of an on-site band. The stay on Koh Tao came to a close and it was back to the guys at Lone Praia to take us on a catamaran to the next island in the Gulf of Thailand. I bid goodbye to Koh Tao once again and watched in anticipation as the next island came into view. We docked an hour later to the popular resort island known as Koh Samui. So this begins my 45 day journey through the vast kingdom of Thailand. I'll visit familiar sites in southern Thailand, showcase some of the best food to eat, and maybe discover some lesser known places in the coming videos. If you like this video and would like to show some love, please don't forget to like and subscribe for future content I'll be releasing. Thank you so much for watching, happy diving, and I'll see you next time.